Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at 1.6 dimensional analysis practice problems. So first problem, what is the density of a 167.4 gram sample of magnesium having a volume of 96.32 milliliters in terms of grams per cubic centimeter? So first things first is it, it helps to know that one milliliter is defined as one cubic centimeter, right? So they're kind of used interchangeably. So first we know, well, density is mass divided by volume. So you can just plug in those numbers, 167.4 grams divided by 96.32 milliliters. And you'd plug them into your calculator and it would lie to you and it would tell you you got 1.73795611. You'd probably keep going, grams per milliliter. So the reason it's lying to you is when we do math in science and we make measurements, we have to account for the uncertainty in our measurements. This 167.4 grams might actually be 167.4327. We don't know. We're not exact. We're measuring it. There's some uncertainty. We don't know what's in a hundredths place after that point four. So when we get an answer like this, we're, we're not being truthful because we don't actually know those numbers. And in science, we like to only claim what we actually know. So when you do a multiplication and division, you got to count how many sig figs there are, how many important numbers, significant figures. So in this top number, it shows that we know four of those digits. So there's four sig figs. Same thing in the bottom number. There's four numbers that we're sure of. So that has four sig figs. So now when we do this math, we go, all right, one, two, three, I, four. I can only have four sig figs in my answer because I only am sure of four numbers. So I count out four. I look to see what's next to the fourth one to determine how I'm going to round. So I'm going to round that to 1.738 grams per milliliter, which is the same thing as 1.738 grams per cubic centimeter. Number two, 1.75 kilograms per cubic meter is equivalent to how many grams per liter? Oh, sorry. So the way you're going to start is, all right, well, I want to get grams per liter and I have kilograms per cubic meter. So I'm going to start, I have 1.75 kilograms per one cubic meter. And now I got two units. I got the kilogram and I have the cubic meter. So I'm going to start by converting one of those units. I'm going to start with the grams. So if I want to convert kilograms to grams, I need a conversion factor. And I need the kilograms to go on the bottom so that it will cancel out diagonally. Well, let me put grams up top. I know kilo means a thousand. So a thousand grams is one kilogram. Now my units are going to cancel out, but the numbers are going to stay. So I got my grams, right? I worked on that unit. Now I got to work on liters, which is going to take a couple of steps. Well, I know a cubic meter is one meter by one meter by one meter, which is the same thing as a hundred centimeters by a hundred centimeters by a hundred centimeters. So this is going to help me figure out the conversion factor for cubic meters to cubic centimeters. So I know that one cubic meter, and I'm going to put cubic meter up top because it's got to cancel out cubic meter in the bottom, is equal to 100 times 100 times 100, or 100 cubed cubic centimeters, right? Because it's 100 by 100 by 100. So now my cubic meters are going to cancel out. I also know that one cubic centimeter is one milliliter, right? If I'm trying to get liters so far, I've converted it to cubic centimeters. Now I can start to convert some more factors. So if I got to cancel out cubic centimeters in my conversion factor, I'm going to need it to be on top and I'm going to put milliliters on the bottom. So one cubic centimeter is one milliliter. So cubic centimeters cancel out right now. I'm left with grams per milliliter. I'm getting close. So now if I need to cancel out the milliliters, I'm going to make sure in my conversion factor, I have milliliters up top and now I can put liters on the bottom. Milli means one thousandth. So it takes a thousand milliliters to equal one liter. So now my milliliters cancel out and the only units I'm left with are my grams and my liters. So now 
Only now do I pick up my calculator and I start plugging and chugging. I plug in all those numbers uh, and I get an answer of <laughs> almost, this might hurt your soul a little bit, 1.75 grams per liter, right? And it might hurt your soul because the number is the same. It didn't really even change, but that's your final answer. As far as sig figs are concerned, the only thing that has sig figs is this first number. There's three sig figs in this 1.75. The rest of the numbers are exact numbers. They're definitions, right? Uh, one liter is exactly a thousand milliliters. We've defined it that way. So they have an infinite number of sig figs. All right, third problem. The output of a plant is like a production plant, like a, you know, a factory is 4335 pounds of ball bearings per week, which is a five day work week. If each ball has a mass of 0 0.0113 grams, how many ball bearings does the plant make in a single day? Give your answer in proper t scientific notation with the appropriate number of sig figs. So first step, what am I trying to get? I'm trying to get ball bearings per day and they tell me how many ball bearings or how many pounds I got in a week so that's how I'm going to start I want ball bearings to be on top so I'm going to have to put the pounds on top so four three three five pounds per one week right I got the time on the bottom here because I need it to en end up with time on the bottom over there so now I start converting what I can well, I know they've defined one week as five days. So to cancel out week, I got to put one week up top and then five days on the bottom. Cancels out week. Now I got pounds per day. Great. But now I got to convert pounds. So this might be something that you got to look up. How many grams are in a pound? So I look it up. Well, if I want to cancel pounds out, I got to put pounds on the bottom. So one pound, I look it up is 453.59 grams. Now this is not an exact number, right? So this is going to affect our sig figs. So pounds cancel out. I'm left with grams. And the reason that I went to grams is because they told me the mass of each BB. So if I put grams on the bottom and ball bearings on the top, I know that one ball bearing has a mass of zero 0.0113 grams. Now my grams cancel out and the only units I'm left with are BBs and days. So now, only now, will you pick up your calculator and plug in all these numbers. 4335 times 1 times 453.59 times 1 divided by 1 divided by 5 divided by 1 divided by 0 0.0113 and then you're going to have to round your answer in terms of sig figs. So this one has four sig figs. This one's an exact number. This one has five sig figs. And then this one only has three sig figs. So you're only going to want to keep three sig figs. And what you end up with is 3.48 times 10 to the seven ball bearings per day. All right, well, I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.